I'm sure you guys are aware of the situation that's going on in North Carolina. And if you don't, let me enlighten you. Well, the word on the street is that the people in North Carolina have not been getting the help that they have needed. And the reason why that is, is because FEMA is broke. Listen to the secretary, y'all. Secretary Alejandro Mayork is sounding the alarm on FEMA funding right after the devastation of Hurricane Helene. Listen. We are meeting the immediate needs uh, with the money that we have. We are expecting another hurricane hitting. Uh, we do not have the funds. FEMA does not have the funds to make it through the season. This is Florida's Attorney General Ashley Moody. She goes into detail saying that the money that FEMA has been receiving, they have been laundering it, y'all. The Harris made disaster. They're saying we need more money. And of course they need more money because they've been laundering it from the true intention, intended purpose of this fund that Congress set forth. So this is what the government has done thus far. You can go apply online and get $750 sent to your cash app predicated upon if you are approved or not. And how do you get approved for the $750 to feed your family for the time being? Well, you can't have homeowners insurance. They're the only ones that are actually getting things done, not the freaking government. Well, okay, I went on FEMA, I applied, and I immediately got denied. Uh, because apparently I have homeowners insurance and that's going to cover that and okay sure I know it will it'll get taken care of thank God we're all safe and alive I know it's just things it's a house but it's not immediate and I don't know what is she talking about I have no idea nobody I know has had immediate assistance nobody's $750 what to our cash app what are you going to give how, how are we going to what's actually crazy about this is that the migrants were getting paid thousands and thousands of dollars off the taxpayers money just in a single year, y'all, migrants have drained $150 billion out of our tax money. This whole thing sounds so familiar, doesn't it, y'all? Like, this just happened a few years ago, right? And then how our own government keeps taking advantage of our own people, meanwhile, rushing to the aid of other countries. But yes, y'all, what do y'all think about this? This is actually pretty scary that we can't even trust our own government. But this is nothing new, y'all, and we're still going to have people go out and vote. This video is strictly for entertainment purposes only. I am only raising awareness to interesting situations during these interesting times. Thank you for tuning to my frequency. Let's get this shift, y'all. Just don't even know what to do. It's, you, you, you came to try to help and figure out, okay, what's next now? And I mean, it's just too big. It looked to me like a lake that we've seen for many years and my friends that live there have seen for their entire lives and then their families' lives before that turned into something that looked like probably a bit of a dump to anyone just looking at it but when you put your eyes on it it's just it, it, it it's these massive things that are, are out there and there's so many of them they seem small and it's it's almost like uh, imagining one when it was moving it was a blender that was just taking out anything in its path absolutely anything and now that it's there and you try to start fathoming what a cleanup and a recovery looks like this is going to take years and years and years to even to even get to a place that's 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 solvable. Hurricane Helene blamed now for more than 130 deaths in the southeast. Rescue crews in western North Carolina are struggling to clear damaged roads and help people in some of the hardest hit communities. According to the people that we spoke with here, they say that they are in desperate need of food and supplies. Meanwhile, elsewhere in North Carolina, more than 380,000 people are still without power. But another big concern here is spotty cell phone service, leaving many residents cut off from the outside world. Food, water, and other essential supplies arrived in Swannanoa, North Carolina by air Monday afternoon after Hurricane Helene left hundreds of streets and highways in the region impassable. The state's Department of Transportation says all roads in the western part of North Carolina should be considered closed to non-emergency travel. On Monday, we saw aid workers in Swannanoa handing out hot meals to those in need. Thank you so much. This video, taken last Friday, shows just how high the floodwaters reached in Swannanoa, only leaving rooftops visible. Pat Harris has lived in the area for six decades. This is devastation. Devastation. It's the worst I've ever seen. Yeah. And I'm 80 years old. The raging floodwaters were so strong they wedged this car into the side of a house. FEMA officials say that they will be delivering truckloads of both food and water every day to North Carolina.
Are these the trumpets? They Ooh, speak. Did you see that? About in the Bible. Y'all check this out. What is that noise? then you know it's coming from God. So there's really nothing to be scared of. Wow. And it's wild because this is the same hurricane name and everything. That happened in 1958. Yeah. Now, I don't believe in coincidence. Y'all let me know what's going on. Uh, was at the and my grandma used to tell me that I was at the bowling when we hear something like that. This flooding in North Carolina does not sit well with me. I think something's going on. So I decided to do some digging. So the first thing I find out is North Carolina has the richest deposits of lithium in the entire world. Yeah, lithium for like cars, batteries, all that. Then I find out they have the world's highest purity quartz deposits. And that quartz just so happens to be the world's supply for AI chips, microchips, and all kinds of stuff. We're talking a $530 billion industry. So this is where it gets interesting. So a company by the name of Piedmont Lithium is awaiting a state mining permit for a site in northern Gaston County. And Gaston County is completely flooded right now. The project was awaiting zoning approval because they were getting backlash from the residents and also city officials. And this lithium mine they want would be the third largest producer of lithium in the world. And they made a deal with Tesla already. Now remember the quartz? So in Spruce Pine, North Carolina, right next to Ashland, they are wanting to expand their mines even larger. And the residents aren't having it either. Enter the floods. People, these are mountain towns. It rarely, if not ever, floods in the mountains. I would know I grew up in the mountains in Colorado, which means none of these people have flood insurance. I mean, the media is saying biblical devastation in North Carolina, AKA like the worst thing that could happen. And you're not coming back from it. Read between the lines, people. Everything happens for a reason. Got my son to the highest point of the house that I could. But once the house detached, we ran into power lines and we ran into trees, which knocked us off into the water. That's when I went under and I lost sight of my mom and my son. I could hear them screaming. My dad was trying to fight for his life while in the water. He is, you know, 73 years old as my mother was. My son was seven. He didn't know how to swim. So my dad had a, grabbed onto a branch or something and was holding on. But the last thing that I heard from my son was he was screaming for Jesus and he was saying, Jesus, please save me. That's the last words I heard out of my son's mouth. And that was as that was when we separated. Um, we all got knocked into the water into different ways. I didn't see them again. And I continued to float down um, up and down through the water until I got trapped in a tree. I continued to look for them, but I heard nothing. I saw my mom screaming for my son at one point. And again, the last I heard from them was screams and screaming for Jesus. I've lived in the Middle East many years, and this is, this is worse than any war that I've been in. It's horrendous. I mean, there's no roads. 
there's no evidence of roads. There's no trees. It's just it's just water and stone. When it comes to where we're gonna go from here, I, I guess anywhere but here. I, I don't I don't I don't see anything to go back to. There's nothing left. I, the firefighters are telling us it's gonna be at least six months before we see our house again. And uh, frankly, I, I doubt very much that it'll be that that fast. So. Hey, dude. Amazing. All right, we got to think about getting out of here because this is going to be. <laughs> James, you're right, man. Put them on your. I don't make videos like this, but I don't believe people understand how devastating this hurricane has been to the folks up in North Carolina. I see people comparing it and asking why haven't they prepared as much as, you know, people in Florida and everything like that. But people just do not understand the cultural and just locational differences in the mountains versus something that happens that has hurricanes more frequently. I grew up in Chimney Rock. That's my hometown. It doesn't exist anymore now. And I now live over in Florida. So I can kind of have say on both things on this perspective. For starters, of course, nobody has flood insurance up in the mountains because we are at least five hours away from the oceans, which, yes, hurricanes could still happen. But as a rule, when a hurricane does happen to cut across, mountain ranges usually work as great barricades to break up storms before they actually hit the towns that are in the valleys that are over there. But, of course, there's exceptions. I've been told by other Floridians, they're saying, then why didn't people evacuate and, you know, go somewhere else to move out if they saw the storm was heading this way? Besides the fact that they were given very little time to do so and just leave in the first place, Appalachian, Blue Ridge Mountain, like, community culture, this is a very poor community. This is a very rural area. That being said, People live in houses that their great-great-grandparents have been living in. Everyone's in-laws, their cousins, their friends, everybody they know lives in the same county. For the, like, Obviously, there's exceptions, but with that being said, you don't have the luxury like you have in Florida, where you have people living in other parts in Florida, or you know people out of state. A lot of people just are stuck there. And besides them not being able to know somewhere else to go, they do not have the money to leave. Also, airports, people say, fly away. There are two airports in the town city I'm living in now in Florida. There is one airport in Charlotte that I know of, and there's one airport in Charlotte, which are over two hours apart from each other. Those are the only airports I can think of around there. They do not have much means of transportation. Let me also explain how the roads work. Everything is built on a mountain cliffside because you cannot build roads through mountains. I mean, you can do a tunnel, but that's very rare. With that being said, you can make at most a four lane road at most. Usually it's a one or two lane highway that zigzags down a mountainside, which means you have usually one, maybe a few exits off the mountain, but you have to wrap around the mountain on the single road and leave. When water floods the base of the mountain, or worse, all this rain causes a mudslide or a rock slide that destroys these cliffside roads, people literally cannot get off their mountain. They are literally trapped on the mountainside, either with their house going to crumble with the landslide or the water is going to fill up from the bottom. So now with the specifics of the region being stated, now let's talk about the absolute anarchy that is happening around this area right now. So besides people just being afraid that they cannot get in contact with loved ones, most cell towers have been destroyed during the flood and same with a lot of power lines. There are people here without power. My family, I lost contact with them up until today because... I could not keep contact with them because the cell towers went down. With that being said, with the contact I was able to get with them today, I am still in shock with what is happening. 
So they told me that they are currently, you know, living off a car battery and a generator, a small generator that they have just to have power for lights in the evening because power is going to be gone. And they said the predicted time where power will be back in their area in North Carolina will be three to four weeks from now. Just imagine not having power, running water, or any of that for three to four weeks. Not only that, but I have friends and family by the lake area, and the ones I have been able to get in contact with have told me that they have seen, this is a trigger warning right here about death, they have seen the bodies floating down the river, bodies in the lake. And they are having the volunteer fire department take photos of these people so they can hopefully identify them later on. As of just between the areas of Bat Cave to Lake Lore, they, I have been told there has been already over 60 bodies found. And that has not been covered on the news yet. I don't know if it ever will, but... From what I've been told by people I know who are volunteer fire department, that's what they've been seeing. Let alone everything being shut down. All the grocery stores or the main chain grocery store in the, in the mountain area has been shut down. Ingalls, the grocery store. This is because their main HQ is in Black Mountain, which has been destroyed. And apparently all of their hu like huge distributor stuff was at that HQ. So literally these grocery stores do not have the food because their distribution has been shut down. There has been resource stations for people to go and pick up, but it has been chaos in some of the bigger towns and such because since all these businesses are shut down, everything's in chaos. There has been a lot of looting, robbery, mugging. People are being held by weapons. <laughs> during these situations at bad hours because it is literally anarchy in some of those areas right now. I was also informed that the National Guard has been there and they've been, there's also been rescues happening, but these rescues are happening at set locations. A lot of people can't reach these rescue stations and if they can't get there to get helicoptered away, they are literally trapped in their homes with no one there to help them. Reinforcements have arrived in these areas, but sometimes it's been causing more difficulties for the people in the community, such as there are areas being closed off because it's too dangerous to go over there, so they're trying to do a safe rescue, but there are people in that community that need to be rescued right away, and there are so many local you know, local firemen, local volunteers that are going to try to rescue people, but they literally can't because these roads are now being further closed off. For example, I know that my uh, brother, he was driving down and he had to take a like a back road and he came across an old lady at a house where she was out of oxygen tanks and she was literally hallucinating in her own house and wasn't looking too good. And he had to go and he was able to provide her oxygen and such. But since there's so much tragedy happening in this area, people even in the community that are trying to help they are kind of being isolated themselves and they cannot even help those who they need to help out. It's just absolutely devastating. Uh, I know I don't post stuff like this, but if you guys want to share this video, get this audio out, do whatever, spread the message that the Carolinas, everyone from Hurricane Helene does need help. Uh, you know, don't follow me. Don't look at like, you know, my account for this stuff, this will be my only video, but I just had to get the word out as someone who is who was both formerly a North Carolinian and now a Floridian, I just am devastated to see how a storm can cause so much destruction. And I just could not rest not knowing that not many people were able to get this perspective. It has been an ultimate tragedy that has happened this year and I just hope that the community not just in North Carolina but all across who can be hearing this audio can band together and hopefully be stronger <laughs> and yeah that's all I can hope for these days all these videos on this hurricane this record for earliest setting hurricane really kind of stuck out to me when I saw this 
What in the sonic boom is this indeed? Well, it looks quite familiar to me, and it might look quite familiar to you guys as well. You see, this is our repurposed technology, our version of that cymatic technology that the old world had. While these patterns were used in the old world to uplift and heal, it's why you'll see this pattern not just etched in stone and ancient ruins, but etched on the floors of many temples and cathedrals of the old world. See, I believe these patterns in tandem with the free energy from the ether above would energize our electric self. And when we were electrically charged, this is where our true capabilities were seen. Our bodies were truly nourished and answers the question of why there was so little bathrooms. Because an ether charged people didn't use the bathroom because they very rarely ate. Those in tune with this world, like Breatharians, can still do it. But just look for proof of that at places like the Palace of Versailles, where there was originally no bathrooms built in that massive palace. Just take a look at that cymatic garden in that palace, though. But it was so bad when the inheritors did take over. They would just use the restroom at this palace 